In our way of life, we believe that the earth is a gift and that there is also a transfer of power. So we consider the sun as like a, a grandfather and it brings power to the earth and it feeds everything here. Well, the, the sun, the moon, uh, they, uh, they all have their, their purpose. We didn't have any hydro till I was, you know, gone on my own and I was 18 years old, it was my first TV. <laughs> but back then we lived this way. And the sun and the moon work in, in our favor all the time for everybody. Like the sky world is working with us. Energy is such a fascinating thing because you have the sun, right? And it, it beats down on the earth and it creates, you know, this amazing balance of, of temperature and, and pressure. So there's this great big cycle of power that's, that's being already generated. And so it only makes sense to try to, to harness that power if people have electrical needs. Being able to, you know, make a transition you know, to renewable energy, uh, I think is important and trying to incorporate that to, you know, our communities and our families and things like that is, is going to be essential moving forward. Bringing solar to the camp and the art build and having it a communal and collective benefit for all people that go there um, makes me really happy because it allows them to continue to practice their culture, practice their language, learn their language, and re-establish the sacred connections with Mother Earth, but also with one another. The idea of having solar here is, you know, I think it's a, a move in, in the right direction, and uh, you know, hopefully we can inspire others, you know, and show people that it's possible. So we just assembled all of the racking systems, so it's up, it's ready, it's moving, it's uh, ready for solar panels. So Mike's just going to bring the trailer over and we're going to get installing. When you look at a house where the parents recycle, the kids grow up, the correlation is the same and the kids are going to recycle. You know, you're, the younger generations and your kids are probably going to want to follow in your footsteps, right? That's what makes me excited about having solar here at the camp. We are cognizant of the land and the waters. We want to do right by the environment, and like most people do. I think consumers want this. They want alternatives to fossil fuels to use what the Creator gave us. It's what we have to do, the, the natural things. A lot of the things that we have access to now, you know, require, you know, uh, petroleum products, or gas, oil, and things like that. So when there's an opportunity that presents itself that allow you, your family, community, uh, you know, a group of people to, to make a transition to more green technology, uh, I think that is an amazing opportunity. We're off grid, right? So that comes with its own challenges. You know, some of that is, uh, you know, access to, you know, electricity for, you know, basic needs and, you know, things like that, uh, running water. So there's definitely some challenges, you know, but with this uh, really exciting thing that's happening with, you know, having access to solar power um, means that, you know, it could really increase, you know, our capacity here to do a lot. In order for the younger people to learn these things that we are doing out here is to come out here and uh, see what it's like for themselves and for their families. When you look at ICA and you look at Sacred Earth Solar, I think Nipki Ajbikong is really a, is a beneficiary of, of the hard work that they do. You know, in 30 years there'll be other technologies, there'll be other things, you know, but for now this is the best this energy sovereignty movement is a transition to going back to our original instructions. So this is really just a, a stepping stone to go back even further to live with Earth.